You're watching the Intel Network Builders V Summit series. I'm Guy Daniels, Director of Content at Telecom TV. Intel has decades of experience in forming, fostering and accelerating ecosystems to drive the next wave of innovation that will touch the lives of every person on our planet. Now, the Intel Network Builders is such a program. Formed over 10 years ago, the Ecosystems program's primary mission is to accelerate network innovation that spans from the core of the network to its very edge. Counting hundreds of companies from around the globe, this award-winning program delivers technical enablement, training and marketing benefits to its members. Well, joining me now to discuss the program's strategies and evolution and to reveal what's in store for the ecosystem in 2022 is Keith Despain director of the Intel Network Builders program. Hello, Keith. Very good to see you again. Now, as I mentioned in the introduction, the ecosystem has been going strong for many years now. Can you tell us about the initial strategies that drove the inception of this program? Hi, Guy. Yes, absolutely. Very excited to be here and to talk a little bit about the history and then where are we going. You know, we started the ecosystem by looking at the changes that are going to be happening in the industry as it moved towards more open architectures. And to do that, we have to have an ecosystem that is capable of driving and moving us forward uh, to open up and make us more flexible in those networks, to make us more reactive to the changes that are coming. And so the Network Builders Program was started at Intel, and we had some very strong founding members and we've continued to grow over time. The whole focus of that ecosystem is how do we move the innovation that is coming downstream from you know, anybody that's working on software or hardware or acceleration and the different changes of how you shape the technology or you move across the generations of wireless technologies that have come out since we've started. All of this is done you know, with our partners to make sure that we're continuing to move it forward to the best that we can as an ecosystem, all from different companies. And that's not an easy task. And so that's why Intel is always committed to our ecosystems and how we drive that. Today, I'm very excited to say in 2021, we've reached over 500 members and partners now that participate in this ecosystem program. This is a program that we believe continues to help and build value with the companies that we work with, as well as those end users in the comm service provider space that are taking advantage of these technologies. The ecosystem is there to help develop new solutions. It's there in a global capacity. It's also part of how we drive technical innovation is taking input and bringing it back not only to the silicon designers here at Intel, but those also working in the open standards community. And finally, we go to market together. How do we do some co-marketing activities to ensure that the industry is moving forward in a pace that will satisfy the needs of the end users? Now you spoke about the changes and the innovation that, that, that's coming along. What fundamental changes have you seen in terms of the scope of the work with these global partners that you've mentioned as the program moved from a classic NFE SDN focused solutions and towards opportunities presented by the Network Edge? Great question. I We've seen a lot of changes from the point of where we first started many, many years ago, really working with what I call the hardware platform companies. And now we're working all the way up through the stack to be able to work with not only the middleware, but the application vendors, even the cloud vendors out there who are bringing new capabilities as the whole network solution moves from you know, network functions and software defined networking to the cloudification and using the likes of Kubernetes capabilities that will continue to move and allow us to innovate at a pace that we see in the cloud side of the world, but now being pushed all the way from not only the cloud, but into the core of the network and out to the edge. How do we make that seamless? How do we continue to work together to ensure the standards of interoperability are there? We also know that these networks, they're there are very few that are greenfield these days. There are a few that we have some great examples are that stand up in our cloud from the beginning, but others are making that transition. And it's our job to help them make that transition from a technology that was owned 100% by themselves and operated by themselves all the way to, now we're seeing a lot of hybrid approaches, everything on the edge to even into the core of the network, into the backend systems, 
are all being done potentially in a cloud type environment, whether that's owned individually by each company or outsourced. And so we want to make sure those technologies are secure and interoperable so that the standards that we have set for ourselves to make them you know, good quality, quality of service capabilities, all the SLAs that are in place are being delivered in a way that continues to improve the experience, not a step backwards. And can you talk about multi-vendor solutions and explain why it's important for the consumer to understand the integration across both hardware and software? Uh, you know, another really good question in terms of, you know, putting these networks together is not a, a simple task. It takes a lot of collaboration between many different companies. So these multi-party solutions to bring to part, you know, let's let's say something as as you know common today as a software defined wireless access network or um, SD WAN areas or wide area networks that we have. These are areas that you know take a, an existing technology in a network and need to bring in new capabilities. And sometimes you're you're still working with the companies that have installed those in the very beginning, but other times you're bringing in new partners and new capabilities. And so these interoperable systems require a lot of technical knowledge. And so we are starting to see in our ecosystem partnerships, a lot of system integrators who have expertise in how do they bridge from the past to the present to the future. We're very excited to know that they're part of the network builders ecosystem, that they bring a huge value to, to bring the glue that makes it all work. And some of them have been doing this for hundreds of years, anywhere from we've had Ericsson, even now to Tech Mahindra or HCL. And these are all strong companies that know how to run networks and build them together with us, as well as with our partners in collaboration with the communication service providers, because it's all about how do we satisfy the needs of those communication service providers with solutions that work that are made easy for them to install, that bring real value to their end users so that they can continue to monetize on top of these now open networks that they are building on Intel technology. That's good to hear. Now, with the growth of the ecosystem, Intel's had to make a considerable amount of investment in keeping the community alive and thriving. What are the key benefits of being an Intel Network Builders partner? There's a, quite a few benefits. First of, and foremost is one, understanding where is the technology going? Where are the building blocks that, that are moving these, these networks forward at a, at a level that you know, is, is incredible in terms of the speed of the new technology? So having that access to this new technology, we spend a lot of investment in terms of our, our Network Builders University program our early access enabling programs that we have that open up the hardware so that companies can start using that technology even before it's commercially available. So those are some of our early investments. And then to, to move it forward, we do a lot on our co-marketing. Our co-marketing is how do we get together as an industry and really showcase what is best? What can we do together to show them the art of what is possible on these networks? Imagine if we were not working closely together and this pandemic hit us 15 years ago. What a challenge it would be. But even today with this technology we're using to do this video conference uh, with you guys made possible by that opportunity of having a great network that can carry the traffic in a good quality video signal and make it readily available to those who will be watching and viewing and seeing what we're doing here. So, Kate, can you uh, announce and tell us about the Winner's Circle? Absolutely. This is uh, why we're, we're here today, is to really show some of our excitement for the Winner's Circle uh, Awards and to hand those out. And so today I'm very excited to be announcing our titanium level uh, partners that uh, have received this award level. These companies have been working with us nonstop in the past year, and we look forward to continued collaboration with them in 2022. These partners are some of them relatively new to the program and others have been with us for the full 10 years. We are excited for their continued support and certainly look forward to 2022 uh, for those that are in the titanium level. I'd also like to introduce the next level, the gold level partners that we have. Our gold level partners, again, they've been working with us and diligently introducing new technology, introducing new solutions, 
and are adopting the latest platforms and bringing those into the network. We are excited to continue our collaboration with them and the work that they have. Many of them are very focused on their customer base in the regions that they support or the technology focus that they have. This gold level is incredibly important to us and we look forward to the continued work through 2022 with this awards level. And finally, we have our member level. These are the companies that we work closely with, but in a more of a limited scope. They are adopting the technology. They continue to bring that technology to market in the niches that they serve, but also as they expand on the industry, they're continuing to have success in their regions, but we also see them globally growing. And we encourage them to continue to work with the Network Builders Program as they continue to grow and expand in the focus areas that they have chosen and continue to drive with Intel at the technology platforms together uh, into the marketplace. Thanks, Keith. And you know, the winner's circle is, as you say, an opportunity to celebrate the industry's accomplishments and, and point us towards a shared goal. What do you think will happen in 2022 that will continue to foster collaborations across these many solutions providers? And what will be Intel's role? For us, you know, the, the industry continues to change and it continues to move forward. And so Intel's role will be to continue to bring out new technology. We're looking forward to launching our next generation platforms in 2022, but specifically to the ecosystem program, I hope we can shortly get back together as face-to-face -face and have meetings to have open discussions and open collaborations to where we can rub shoulders again and make sure that uh, we are addressing those needs that we find in the industry in a very collaborative way. One of the other things that we'll be looking at from an ecosystem program here at Intel is how do we bring a single one Intel story out to the, the various industries that Intel focuses on. And that is called the Intel Partner Alliance. The Intel Partner Alliance is, a, is already launched and running in many different areas of Intel's technologies. And we are going to be bringing the network builders community together with the Intel Partner Alliance next year. It will be a collaboration as we grow together, as we understand what's available through the Intel Partner Alliance program and also the Network Builders program. We continue to see opportunities to share across where our consumers and our customers are interested in technologies that Intel has. This can include everything from our third gen Xeon scalable processor all the way through to the artificial intelligence, the acceleration cards that we have, our IPU, that is now available, all of these technologies we want to have under one umbrella, umbrella and available to the ecosystem. So this is why we wanna participate in the Intel Partner Alliance with the Network Builders Program. We will continue to drive and move that one forward. Now, as always, we continue to have our website as our main way to reach out and communicate with our partners. We invite all of them those that are interested, those that are learning, want to be part of the, the Network Builders University program, please do come to the website. Click on here that you can find it online at networkbuilders.intel.com and sign up. We are um, offering this to the community and we continue to grow and maybe next year we'll be above 600. But today we're excited in opening this to all of our partners and those interested to come and to continue to be part of our community. Yes, I think we're all eagerly waiting to see what 2022 brings us and also how the Network Builders program develops. Keith, as always, very good talking with you. Thank you. Thank you, Guy. And as always, we appreciate the collaboration and we look forward to the continued expansion of the ecosystem and how we can work together and the, and the focus that Telecom TV continues to provide to us. Thank you. Thanks, Keith. And if you haven't already done so, then please do watch the video discussions from this Intel Network Builders vSummit series. We take a close look at VRAN, Edge, Security, and the Network Core. For now, though, thank you very much for joining us, and goodbye.